Hi, it's Dwyer. RichardDwyer.co uh, Always, 1776.com Let's give an update on the trial of Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now today is Wednesday, April the 7th, 2021. Let me just make a few points here. I understand my point of view here is in the minority here on the internet, right? I've read your comments. I encourage everyone to read the comments left to the earlier George Floyd videos. Let me also just say that personally, I'd like to see all dirty cops off the street, right? I don't have any patience whatsoever for any dirty cop. I want to make that clear. I also want to point out, too, that I myself, um, as a lawyer, family lawyer, in a family law case, um, have had police show up in court and have had them on the stand and have questioned them about their own police report, right? So just understand, uh, I'm not here as some advocate for law enforcement, right? Far from it. I believe law enforcement should be here to serve the public, right? I have no patience whatsoever for dirty cops. Now, all of that said, the trial for me so far, and I know it's not reported this way, but the trial for me so far has been lopsided. The defense is winning this by a wide margin. The lawyer for Derek Chauvin, Eric Nelson, who's soft-spoken, right, whose body language is a bit deferential to witnesses, is playing poker. He's killing the prosecution. Let's talk about why. The prosecution has a big hole in their case, and it's huge. They need to distance themselves from their own medical examiner's report. We'll call it the ME report. Right? Understand, the medical examiner is paid for by the taxpayers. Right? Between the parties, the state versus Derek Chauvin, the medical examiner is a state employee. Right? Now, let me just point out, the prosecution here is inherently inconsistent. On the one hand, the ME report did not find that George Floyd died because of asphyxiation. Right? He was not suffocated to death. That's the ME report. Inconsistently, at trial, that's what the state is trying to argue. They're telling you to overlook their own medical examiner's report. They want you to look instead, not at the doctor who did the ME report, but at the witnesses that they're bringing in to trial, right? Many of them want to make the argument that Chauvin was on George Floyd's neck and that Chauvin choked him out. They're trying to make some other arguments too, that George Floyd shouldn't even have been on the street that Chauvin abused his discretion by placing George Floyd on the street. And that, of course, once he was on the street, Chauvin kept him down for too long. Should have listened to George Floyd when George Floyd said, I can't breathe. 
should have allowed him to breathe, should have ended the neck restraint. Now, just understand that that argument is losing in court by a wide margin. Because, of course, the ME report makes the point that there's no evidence. There are no clinical findings that George Floyd's airwaves, excuse me, airwaves, were ever blocked by Derek Chauvin. Folks, it's so bad that the police chief was on the stand. I know this is not how it was reported, but the police chief was on the stand for a long time, was extremely critical of Derek Chauvin. The theme that the prosecution is trying to harp on is that Derek Chauvin ignored his training, that Derek Chauvin was outside of the lines. And at the end of the police chief's testimony, Eric Nelson showed the police chief two different angles of Chauvin restraining George Floyd. And the police chief had to admit on the stand, and this is going to be a pillar of the closing argument, that Derek Chauvin was not on the back of George Floyd's neck. Rather, Derek Chauvin was on his shoulder blade. Let me repeat that. In a case where the prosecution is trying to show suffocation, the police chief, one of their main witnesses, a prosecution witness, has testified under oath that Derek Chauvin was on Floyd's shoulder not the back of his neck. So let's think this through. The length of time that George Floyd is on the floor is less material now because there was no obstruction to his breathing. If he's breathing the whole time, or should have been breathing the whole time because his airways are not obstructed, then it doesn't make much of a difference. Whether he's down for seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, he's breathing. You're not depriving him of oxygen. Well, let me just say, the prosecution's going to have a very hard time arguing otherwise. So we know that Derek Chauvin's heart stops beating. We know that Derek Chauvin recently took fentanyl and methamphetamine. We also know that Derek Chauvin's heart valves showed some blockage. She had a weakened heart. We know he suffered from a sickle cell condition that may have contributed to the high buildup of carbon dioxide in his lungs and that his lungs were inflamed. Well, understand, <clears throat> they had the emergency room physician on the stand, the one who tried to resuscitate George Floyd. And of course, he testified under oath that the carbon dioxide buildup in George Floyd's lungs could have been caused by a respiratory illness. And that the stopping of George Floyd's heart could have been caused by fentanyl and methamphetamines. Now, people need to understand that there is a burden of proof in criminal cases. This is not a 51% to 49% type of situation. Twelve jurors have to find guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Now if 
the prosecution is inconsistent as they've been here, if they're trying to tell the jury, which they are, don't believe our ME report entirely. You can't believe all of our own ME report. We want you to disregard these parts of the ME report and to instead believe that George Floyd was choked to death when, of course, the police chief has already admitted that Chauvin's knee is on George Floyd's shoulder blade and where the ME report has already admitted that there are no signs of asphyxiation. No clinical signs of choking. Then just tell me, how are 12 jurors on this evidence going to be able to convict Derek Chauvin beyond a reasonable doubt? The testimony being offered by the prosecution is cumulative. Right? They're bringing in expert after expert to try to distance the state from the ME report. Once you understand that that's the purpose of people coming in and saying, oh, he died from positional asphyxiation. Once you realize that a part of the state, the medical examiner, has already determined that that's not the case and disputes that finding, then the number of witnesses that the prosecution puts on to dispute their own ME report becomes immaterial. <clears throat> Some juror, and it only takes one for a hung jury. Some juror is gonna say, gee, how can I believe the prosecution? When prosecutors themselves don't believe parts of their own case. Let me also say this too. I understand some police personnel took the stand and said, hey, George Floyd shouldn't even have been on the ground. Right? That's the argument. Let me just point out that the jury has seen the tapes. George Floyd had a busted up nose from resisting being put in the police car. He's out on the street because he won't go in the police car. Right? The witnesses aren't operating in a vacuum. The jurors can see the tape. They can look at the tape and understand that George Floyd was resisting arrest. Right? They understand that there are other cops involved. That George Floyd wasn't profiled. That he's actually being arrested for passing a counterfeit bill. So the arrest is valid. So the witnesses have had to admit that there are times when a police officer has to use what they're calling a neck restraint on an arrestee. There are times where it is proper to put someone who's getting arrested on the floor. The police chief on the stand admitted that. So if those times exist and jurors see that George Floyd was resisting arrest and a juror believes the ME report that Derek Chauvin, after putting George Floyd on the floor, did not block his airwaves didn't have his foot on the back of Floyd's neck 
had it on his shoulder blade. And keep in mind, we have multiple angles of it. The well-known video, but also body armor video that gives it contacts. Then in the comment section of this video, explain to me how, under those circumstances, Chauvin could be convicted of murder. Folks, I question whether Chauvin can even be convicted of manslaughter. Right? Let me also point out, too, that when I first saw the tape, I myself thought, my goodness, this looks like the cop murdered this guy. I thought it was clear cut. Well, now we have the ME report that has a cause of death that's different than the cause of death that the prosecution is trying to argue at trial. That fact by itself should create reasonable doubt. Right? The prosecution's being inconsistent. Also, the fact that now we're finding out that Chauvin's not on the back of his neck. The police chief told you, under oath, that Chauvin is actually on his shoulder blade. That further weakens the case. We're also finding out from others that the crowd that gathered was an upset crowd. And that that's a factor that a cop has to consider in restraining an arrestee. So, while CNN and many others are reporting that the prosecution is doing well and while they're summarizing the witness's testimony, saying, oh, this witness testified that Chauvin was out of line and even restraining George Floyd, right? Just understand that the testimony at this point, and they're all prosecution witnesses, is getting cumulative and can't cure the basic defect in the prosecution case, which is that they have an ME report that has a cause of death that's different from the one they're arguing for here at trial. The prosecution doesn't agree with itself how could it convince a jury of 12 to convict beyond a reasonable doubt when their narrative of the case is inconsistent? So let's see what happens when the ME takes the stand. Let's see what happens when the defense presents defense witnesses. Let's just say, though, that I'm sure that Chauvin's team, and I don't know them, Right? Eric Nelson is his attorney. They have to be privately thinking this is going about as good as it could go for us. Right? What might happen in closing is they might have the trial transcripts. And they might remind the jury, they likely will remind the jury, that the police chief himself testified that Chauvin is on Floyd's shoulder blade, not the back of his neck. Right? They'll have the ME report. And I'm sure they'll have testimony from the medical examiner who was a doctor. And understand, the ME report was vetted by another pathologist. They'll have quotes from him that asphyxiation was not the cause of death. So in a case where the prosecution is trying to prove to you that Eric Floyd was choked to death, the prosecution's own witnesses 
will tell the jury that there's no sign of suffocation. That they've had other doctors look at the case who disagree with their own medical examiner. This is a very difficult case. I'll be surprised if Chauvin gets convicted on any of the charges. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you followed the case and you have an opinion that you want to share here, if you have a disagreement with any part of what I've said, then I hope you leave that in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.